Hi, good evening. How is everyone? My name is Dr. Chu Gim Hui. I'm here at Cardiac Vascular Central KL. We call ourselves CVS KL, the new heart centre in town. Now, this is our, I hear this is our second time that CVS KL is organising this Facebook Live. It's an opportunity for us to bring education, information to everyone uh, out there. If you have any questions pertaining to the topic that we are talking about, please dial in or uh, write in Facebook. We are more than happy to uh, answer and try to, to address all your questions. I guess this is the time that you can ask your friendly doctor any question that you want, things that you don't dare you ask your doctor, just shoot and uh, we'll try to address them. So today, uh, we are going to talk about a very common topic, high blood pressure or hypertension. You know, you've heard about hypertension so often, but uh, it's a question or topic that came, keeps coming up, up and again and again. Why is that so? Because such an important topic because it affects so many of us. Do you know that if you look at people around you, in Malaysia, our statistics tells us that one in three adults have high blood pressure. I guess some of your friends or family members would have high blood pressure as well. It is estimated that if you are today, let's say, 40, 50 years old, in 20 to 30 years' time, at least half of you would also have high blood pressure. So it is a very personal thing. Myself, yourself, everyone uh, is at high risk of getting high blood, high blood pressure. And if you talk about, let's say, why do people die, the most common cause of death is heart disease and stroke. And the causes or risks that can give rise to these conditions, hypertension accounts for half of them. So a very, very common problem. So we're going to um, wait for some of the questions to come in. I know that I received some questions earlier, but let me do something different. I'd like to maybe tell you something about the history of high blood pressure. I'm going to just show you one slide, uh, one or two slides to bring you back to what we were many years ago and about high blood pressure, okay? If you can see the slides, then you let me know, okay? Well, you know that high blood pressure is not something new. We think that we only know about high blood pressure after we know how to measure them. Not, not exactly, you know. Could you, if you could see the slide here, the, the first medical literature in the world comes from China, uh, the Huang Di Neijing. It is described that when the physicians felt the pulse of the patient, they felt that the pulse became hardened in patients who took too much salt. So the pulse became hardened because of elevated blood pressure. So they diagnosed blood pressure even then. And when they described some of these patients who had leg swellings, they're actually describing the complication of high blood pressure when they had heart failure and kidney failures. Really amazing, isn't it? And it's only in the last maybe close to 70, 80 years, we start to appreciate uh, the problem of high blood pressure and the need to control. In fact, if you look at 1930s, very little is available to treat. And many doctors even then thought it was the wrong thing to actually diagnose uh, high blood pressure and to treat them. You know? Okay, we'll, we'll come back live again. Oh yeah, one more thing. A very interesting thing. Um, we talk about high blood pressure because we think that blood pressure is something that is benign. Um, many of us don't feel very strongly about high blood pressure, especially if uh, you have no symptoms. Right? You only start to fear about high blood pressure when someone that you know ends up with a complication like stroke, kidney failure, heart failure and so on. I'm going to tell you this true story which tells you really what happens when someone has got hypertension that is not treated. I will bring back to the slides and this is a true story of one of the American presidents, President Franklin Roosevelt. In the 1930s, when he was rather young, that was his blood pressure, it was about 128.82. A few years later, they have their personal physicians, you know, and they were able to measure the blood pressure. The pressure then went up to 162.98. Nothing was given. This would have alarmed many of doctors today, actually. And then uh, look at then, about three years later, when he was 57 years old, pressure was 180 or 88. Again, very little was available 
simple treatment like massage, well, you, today you can go to Thai massage, but I'm not sure how much it lowers your blood pressure. There are some medications to sedate the patient. And then a few years later, this president was already having problem with heart failure. And uh, the doctors then decide maybe they should cut down on the cigarette and the alcohol and maybe take a low salt diet and help a little bit. Further down the line, just a one year later, he started to have many, many episodes of stroke. He was still holding the office of the president, imagine that. And in one meeting, you know, the, the um, Prime Minister of UK, uh, Winston Churchill, thought that uh, President Roosevelt looked very un unwell. So he asked his personal physician to have a look at Pre President uh, Roosevelt. Churchill's physician said, this man doesn't look good. He thinks that he will not last very long. And true enough, within a few months he died. He died of bleeding in the brain. So what I've actually spoken to you about is actually the natural history of untreated hypertension. Many patients of mine today tell me, let's go back live, that they do not want treatment for high blood pressure. Because I feel well, well doctor, I don't have any no symptom, why should I take medicine? I try to avoid medicine because if I start medicine, I cannot stop. Oh, that's the common thing that we always get, right? You must understand, high blood pressure, 90% of the time, you have no symptom. That is why we call high blood pressure the number one silent killer. Your pressure can be more than 200, perfectly normal. You don't wait for symptoms. Many times, patients also tell me, I know when my pressure is high. I will take my medicine when my pressure is high. When I get giddiness, headache, neck pain. Well, not true actually. 90% of the time, no symptom. Right? When you have, let's say, headache, you have any bodily pain, that itself causes the blood pressure to go up. It is not a symptom of high blood pressure that causes you to have headache and so on. Right? So I think you have to have the concept or idea that when doctors want to manage the blood pressure, it is to prevent complications that happen 10, 15, 20 years later. It is not to manage the blood pressure then and then because effects of high blood pressure happen, takes a long time, the complications to develop. Okay? Well, I hope that gives you a good background about the importance of high blood pressure and why we need to uh, manage uh, high blood pressure. Okay? Right. Now, I have uh, some questions that came in earlier and maybe we'll try to address uh, some of these uh, questions. Okay? Um, I think one very common thing I hear from not about high blood pressure is actually low blood pressure. So let's get that out of the way first. Uh, many young patients, especially young ladies, come to see me and say, my doctor say I got a low blood pressure problem. To be honest, is there a low blood pressure disease? Actually, not really. Uh, I, I think that the pressure is low. Well, if you look at the whole world or let's say any population, blood pressure has got a range. There's no one person with a fixed blood pressure. Right, it is uh, like a bell shape. Some people on the higher side, most people in the middle, some on the lower side. Okay? So usually the younger persons, especially the young ladies, tend to have a lower blood pressure. It is not a low blood pressure disease per se, but this in the lower end of the normal range. So that is not a problem actually, most of the time. Of course, if your pressure is on the lower side, in situation when you are unwell, you're not eating well, you're dehydrated, you may have a bit more symptoms related to low blood pressure like giddiness. But by and large, it's not a disease. So don't get alarmed uh, by, by this condition. Okay? All right. The other thing is, patients ask because they don't want to take medicine. Doctor, can I, boleh I, tak mau makan ubat, saya jaga makan, saya exercise, Boleh control atau boleh, boleh treat the blood pressure. Maybe possible if the blood pressure is already very high, then you say your pressure 150, 160, very difficult usually for us to be able to control the 
the blood pressure without medication. But those yang ada border, those borderline, let's say pressure about 140 plus 150, the bottom maybe about 80 to 90. Sometimes by just improving on the lifestyle, like more exercise, uh, watching your diet, losing weight, that can help. That is why high blood pressure patients, the treatment is actually not just medication. It involves everything, including lifestyle modification. In fact, for all patients with high blood pressure, lifestyle must come first. Whether or not you take medication, lifestyle must come first. The only problem is lifestyle is the most difficult to maintain. Most people, when they see the doctor diagnose with high blood pressure, very, very good in their, in their motivated to control. Exercise three, four times a week, watch the diet, lose weight. Everything under control, three to six months, they lose the motivation, they go back and then pressure goes up again. So that's why it's difficult, but it is very worthwhile to try to uh, improve on the lifestyle. So let's talk about what we can do to, uh, let's say, diet dulu. How we can improve the uh, blood pressure control with the diet. There are a few ways that you can modify your diet to improve your blood pressure. We know very clearly that a lot of salt will increase your blood pressure. We know that most of the food that we take today, especially those outside, contains a lot of salt. This salt may be direct salt that they put in during the um, cooking or preparation, or could be hidden salt. Hidden salt include there is sodium. Yeah? Uh, your MSG, Ajinomoto, is salt. A lot of processed food contains uh, salt as well. Baking soda is salt. So a lot of this hidden salt uh, is there and that can increase your blood pressure. So we want to reduce salt intake. We also advise, someone has asked a question about the call uh, a DASH diet, D-A-S-H. It is one of the known diet therapy, dietary um, uh, action to stop hypertension, I think, and that's the acronym. So basically that diet emphasizes a low sodium diet and also a diet that is high in vegetables, fruits, um, legumes and nuts and these are diets that are high in potassium which has also been shown to lower, um, lower the uh, blood pressure. The, this diet also emphasizes less of the, uh, uh, the saturated fat, so that means that uh, meat products, you take low fat uh, dairy products, so those are the things that you can do from the diet standpoint to lower the blood pressure. This DASH diet if you follow very strictly, you can actually lower the blood pressure by about between 5 to 14 millimeter mercury. So that's actually very effective. Next thing, body weight. Weight, as if you are overweight, obese, more likely to get high blood pressure. All right? So losing weight will help to, to lower your blood pressure. Many of my patients here, they are overweight. You know that when they're overweight, there's so many uh, conditions that happen. Blood pressure is one of them. Cholesterol may be related to their diet. Uh, then uh, they will have uh, diabetes and so on. When they lose weight, many of these things get improved without adjusting the medications. So weight loss is very important. Okay? Um, so diet, weight loss, exercise. Exercise is a very effective way to, uh, to lose weight. All right? So, Exercise, what do we do? What do we advise about exercise? Well, one is normal physical activity. Try to increase. Allow if you walk, use, uh, use uh, the, uh, the staircase more. Uh, try to not to use the elevator or the lift. But if you can, also dedicate a time for exercise. Um, uh, what we call a good cardiovascular exercise will be exercise that you do at least three times to four times a week about half an hour each session, an exercise where you increase your heart rate. So that means maybe you can do brisk walking, a bicycle, swimming, whatever you like. As long as you do that, that would help with the blood pressure as well. So those are the lifestyle changes that you can implement to improve your blood pressure. And also, there are a few things in terms of your habit. Alcohol, too much alcohol will raise your blood pressure as well. Cigarette smoking, every puff of smoke, after half an, within that half, a, half an hour after the cigarette, a lot of chemicals in the smoke that cause the constriction of the blood vessel can raise blood pressure 
temporarily as well. So many things that you can do from the lifestyle standpoint. Okay, right. Yes, uh, Zari, you asked whether fruit is good. Yes, we've answered that. Take lots of fruits that's good for you. Okay, and you try to, uh, we encourage people to take more fruits. But of course, if you have um, diabetes, for example, then you've got to watch the fruits that are very, very sweet. Durian, nanka, less lah, boleh lah, tapi less lah, yeah? Okay, let's see if there's any other question. Okay, now, we talk about, <coughs> about diet. Uh, and lifestyle changes, I think that must be emphasized for all patients and try to maintain as long as possible. But let's come back to the basic question. When we talk about high blood pressure, what is high blood pressure? There, strictly, I mean, there are many ways to define high blood pressure and it usually comes from the doctor's measurement of your blood pressure. Right? So it is from measurement and the usual measurement is with the blood pressure monitor okay you can use the one in the clinic that the doctors use the stethoscope to listen today there's so many of those ambulatory or blood pressure monitor that you can buy in the market <coughs> these are automated these are not too bad you know <coughs> my patients ask me can i rely on this uh, blood pressure if they are well calibrated they should not differ very much for the clinic measurement so they are accurate but then they say how come my doctor uh, when i come to see you pressure always high but at home is normal eh? And then you, why you want to adjust my, my medication? Well, I think we have to understand that uh, I think doctors also realize that there are some patients, they are a bit more anxious or takut ke gemuruh bila datang klinik, the pressure may be high. This, this is a true phenomenon. Uh, we call that white coat hypertension. So if you see a doctor with a white coat, the pressure will be high. Uh, so this is actually a subconscious phenomena. We think or we know that at least about 20 to 30% of people may have this white coat effect. Right? It could be um, a true white coat hypertension. Maksudnya, your pressure is normal at home, but when you come to the clinic or hospital, the pressure is high. You can have high blood pressure, but you can also have white coat effect, meaning that the pressure is uh, maybe a bit high but when you come to see a doctor it even goes even higher okay so we recognize this phenomena that is why nowadays uh, doctors are getting more uh, or um, if we like to get patients to also be involved in the care of their blood pressure we encourage them maybe to get one of those home blood pressure monitor and bring those kind of measurements and record when they come to the visit for us to decide whether there is a white coat hypertension there's another method, sometimes we doctors get the patients to do is we get them to bring back a blood pressure cuff that's connected to an automated machine, we call that ambulatory blood pressure monitor for 24 hours. So every half an hour, they will record the blood pressure. Even Master Tido pun dia record. And then we see the trend. So that is a faster way for us also to diagnose whether someone has got a white coat hypertension uh, or a white coat hypertension or actually normal hypertension. Okay. There is one more uh, thing that I also want to mention. Does not mean that white coat hypertension is fine, in the sense that Kalau is just white coat, it's only high in the clinic. We need to monitor this patient because even if they do not have high blood pressure now, in the future, they are more likely to develop high blood pressure. Okay? There's one more condition. It's called mast hypertension, meaning this patient, blood pressure in the clinic is normal but at home is high. So we miss this patient a lot. Uh, these patients are more risky because of the missed diagnosis. They are not treated. They have higher risk of all the complications of high blood pressure. Okay? Uh, actually, I wanted to come, uh, I went a bit out of the uh, way late, about how do you define high blood pressure, okay? The, um, there are many definitions for high blood pressure, but by and large today, we think that uh, the commonly accepted threshold to say someone has high blood pressure is 140 systolic, 90 diastolic. 140, 90. What are the two numbers? The first number, the systolic 140, is called the systolic blood pressure. That is a blood pressure when your heart pumps. When your heart relax, there is also a pressure. That's the second one, called the diastolic blood pressure. Both also important, alright? Both also 
would increase the risk of uh, complications if it's not treated. But as you grow older, you're more likely to have more of the systolic hypertension than the diastolic hypertension. Younger people, more likely to have the diastolic, but it can be both as well. Okay, so that's how we define high blood pressure most of the time. Let me see whether, <coughs> right. Okay, Ashwin, great question. <coughs> Does underweight patient uh, have a risk of getting high blood pressure? Definitely. Okay, of course, if you are overweight, you're more likely to get high blood pressure. But if you are underweight, doesn't mean you will not get high blood pressure. There are many reasons why someone gets high blood pressure. Um, one of it is genetic. If your first degree relative, your parents, your siblings have high blood pressure, you're more likely to get high blood pressure in your lifetime. So Takira, if you are fat or normal weight or underweight, you're at risk. Okay? So that is one of the risk factors. Um, coming to that, about most of the, the, the causes of high blood pressure, most of the time we don't know. They are multifactorial, many mechanisms for the high blood pressure. Right? But when someone who is young, let's say below the age of 40, and they come with the diagnosis of high blood pressure, doctors like to find out more whether there may be any cause that can explain their high blood pressure. You know, that most of 90% of the time, blood pressure cannot be explained. So what do we do? We just manage the blood pressure to try to prevent the complication. The younger people, the 10% may have what we call secondary hypertension, all right? The blood pressure is related to a cause. It can be kidney disease, some people with kidney problem, some hormonal problem can cause high blood pressure, some certain drugs that patients are taking may cause pressure to be high. So we want to make sure that they are not the secondary cause. So kalau ada secondary reason, we manage the secondary problem, for example, a, a kidney problem, whatever, a hormonal problem, we treat that, sometimes we can uh, reduce or even cure the high blood pressure. So younger persons, sometimes the doctors will do a few more tests to make sure they're not dealing with the secondary hypertension, okay? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, Ken, what are the symptoms of blood pressure? We said most of the time, no, no symptoms. So remember that. Most people uh, do not have high blood pressure. Does snoring indicate a high, high blood pressure? Mm, well, not directly. Okay, snoring, what does, why, why does the person snore? A snor snoring happens when there is a narrowing or obstruction to the upper airway. So if your upper airway is narrow for whatever reason, let's say nasal problem, whatever, but the more, most common reason is obesity. When you're fat, you got a lot of fat, not just here, but fat around the upper airway, so the airway is narrow. When you sleep, your tongue falls back and close your airway. As you try to breathe, they force the air through. That vibration causes the snoring sound. Okay? Now, some patients can have the very severe uh, symptom of this uh, obstruction. We call it the sleep near, meaning the airway is completely blocked and these patients cannot breathe. So when they sleep, not only they snore, they wake up to try to catch some breath, and then they go back to sleep. So they can sleep for six hours, eight hours, they can wake up 30, 40 times without knowing it. So they get very poor quality of sleep. Now this extreme form of what we call obstructive sleep apnea is associated with high blood pressure. Right? Recently, I got one, one uh, lady who was seeing a doctor for high blood pressure, the, the huge, she was started on medication, but she wasn't sure, wasn't keen to start the medication. So we were not sure her blood pressure was borderline. So I put her on this 24 hour blood pressure monitor. And what we found was daytime blood pressure normal. At nighttime, her blood pressure was high. And then we, dis we, we questioned further. Actually, she's got some snoring issues. So the next thought is whether this patient has obstructive sleep apnea that may cause a high blood pressure. So this is one of the things that we want to look out for. If you have sleep apnea, they may need some special tests called a sleep study and special treatment. Once they treat the sleep, sleep apnea, sometimes the blood pressure resolves. Okay? So that's how snoring is associated with the high blood pressure. Okay? Great. Brenda, is that a cause, uh, is that a concern for someone for low blood pressure? So again, low blood pressure for a normal person 
it may be normal, especially if you're a young lady. High heart rate, there are many causes for high heart rate. High heart rate can be just because you're excited, can be high heart rate, you're beside your boyfriend after some argument or quarreling. Drinking a lot of Starbucks can also increase your heart rate as well, caffeine, all right? There are a few uh, medical conditions that can cause a high heart rate like thyroid disease and so on. Those are so many things. Uh, uh, some people who are not very fit tend to have a higher resting heart rate. So many reasons for that, okay? Ah, Andre, red yeast rice, a popular supplement. Red yeast rice is actually one supplement. Um, nowadays, they don't take the rice. They still sold some rice, but sometimes they are sold in already in capsule forms today. Red yeast rice is mainly as a supplement uh, adjunctive treatment to lower cholesterol not for high blood pressure okay all right um Kase Jera, you have a question here ah okay nice question i like this one doctor if i have high blood pressure in my 20s will it worsen as i grow older or worst case scenario fatal very interesting very important question now Younger hypertensive, for whatever reason, we need to be more aggressive with your treatment. Why? Because you have many more years ahead that you are going to deal with high blood pressure. Your bodily system would have exposure to high pressure for longer time. So more likelihood of complications of high blood pressure. So we want to be more aggressive in the control of blood pressure to prevent complications 20, 30 years later. Okay? So as long as you control your blood pressure well, we can prevent some of the complication. But what is the natural history of high blood pressure? Most of the time, high blood pressure gets worse as you grow older. Because there are many reasons that you get high blood pressure. One of the reasons is actually stiffening of the blood vessels in the body, the bigger vessels in the body. As you grow older, the blood vessels get stiffer and your pressure may go up. That is why if you have uh, a friend or family member who has high blood pressure, you will notice that maybe they are started with a medication to control their blood pressure. It's well controlled for a few years. Later on, pressure starts to climb. The doctor will then either add on another medication or increase the dose of the medication to control. Then it gets controlled again. A few years down the line, pressure goes up again. The doctors have to escalate the treatment. So the natural history is that your blood pressure tends to get worse as you grow older. Do not be worried by the fact that you need to take more medications to control the blood pressure. More importantly is to get your blood pressure controlled than to worry about the number of medications you need to take. If you look at the, the general world population of high blood pressure, let me just switch this off. Okay. Two-thirds uh, two of the pedicure patients of high blood pressure, most of them will need two or more medications to control the high blood pressure. So that's the natural history, all right? So don't worry. Yes, it, most of the time it will get worse as you grow older, but importantly, you must monitor, see your doctor regularly for follow-up. Just because you've been prescribed with one medication doesn't mean that you just can continue to refill a prescription without seeing a doctor. At least if it's under control, six monthly or yearly, go back to see your doctor to see whether adjustment is needed okay ah Rayson Rayson asks hi Rayson how are you uh, it's one of our friends in uh, CVSKL how does high blood pressure cause the, the term is left ventricular hypertrophy um, or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy well okay one of the things that sometimes your doctor will do for you if you have high blood pressure is we do a test called an echo Echo is an ultrasound. Uh, you see the ultrasound for babies, but this is the ultrasound for the heart. So we scan the heart using the ultrasound. We look for thickening of the heart muscle. Imagine that if you have high blood pressure, every day your heart is pumping against a high pressure. It's just like you go to the gym, you work hard, your muscles will get bigger. So if your heart it needs to pump against high pressure every day, the heart muscles get thicker. This is called left ventricular hypertrophy. If your doctor finds that you have left ventricular hypertrophy, it means one, 
your blood pressure has not been well controlled for a long time. You have left the blood pressure uncontrolled, that's why you got thickening of the heart muscle. Number two, because you have had untreated blood pressure for a long time, you are at higher risk to get stroke, heart failure, kidney failure. These patients deserve more aggressive treatment to, uh, to, uh, to control their blood pressure. Sometimes, after you control the blood pressure well, the thickening can get less, so that's a benefit. Okay? Reason, uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is not related to high blood pressure, it's actually a, more likely a genetic disorder where the heart muscles uh, spontaneously get thickened without, without, uh, not, not due to high blood pressure. Okay? Ah, okay, hi Dr. Shafika. Uh, thanks for writing in. Does caffeine intake cause high blood pressure? Strictly, no. It doesn't cause uh, high blood pressure. So don't worry if you like coffee. Two, three cups a day is okay, but caffeine does increase your, your heart rate. So it's okay to take coffee, but just watch your for palpitations. So not, don't worry about the high blood pressure, okay? Uh, okay. Well, after I exercise, this is from Wendy. After I exercise, I feel my heart beat very fast. I can hear the pumping on my ear. Is that high blood pressure? That is not high blood pressure. Okay, high blood pressure is by measurement, when you measure. Of course, when you exercise, your heart needs to pump harder and stronger and faster to, to increase the supply to match with the demands of the body. All right? So is that forceful contraction and faster heart rate that cause the pulsatile sort of um, uh, expansion of the vessels near your ear, which is why you can hear or feel the pulsation, but it's not an indication of high blood pressure. So it can be normal, most likely normal, not to worry, okay? How to detect I have hypertension? Uh, Irene, you have to measure your blood pressure, okay? You can measure it with a home monitor or you can see a doctor to measure that, all right? Jamie, Jamie asks, uh, for a 60-year-old, Normal blood pressure, but high heart rate. Well, um, high heart rate, high as we discussed in the previous uh, question, it depends on how high. Heart rate, normal, we say between 60 to 100. Okay? Uh, so if it's within that range, we assume that it's actually normal, but of course, we like to have a lower heart rate. We think that the lower heart rate person may be more, um, more fit, but there are many reasons why heart rate can be fast or slow. Something is slow because of some medications as well. Okay? Mm, they have, mm, questions are coming in now. Let's see what we have next. Ah, okay. You can, you ask whether instead of taking medications, can you take supplements? Well, uh, I have to be honest. When you have high blood pressure, let's say, you have confirmed high blood pressure, you need to, of course, improve on the lifestyle. If your pressure is very high, you need to take medications because you want to prevent complications of high blood pressure. Taking these medications are proven to save life. We have shown that very clearly. In fact, treating high blood pressure is one of the most cost-effective ways to improve the patient's outcome. You just lower the systolic blood pressure by 2 mm, we estimate that you have a 7% less risk of heart disease, 10% less risk of stroke. Okay? But are there supplements that lower high blood pressure? <coughs> it is not within the domain of Western medicine. This is how I approach the problem. If there are supplements that you think you want to try, you may go ahead. I will not stop my patients to do that, but do not stop the necessary medication. Okay? Uh, I don't think that, that you can rely on supplements alone if you have established high blood pressure. Right? So if you want to take additional, please, by all means, go ahead. Now, there's a question from Terence. Okay. Okay, Terence has a personal question. Now, how long do we have? We have, uh, we have we passed time? We have two minutes only. Wow, so many more questions come in. Okay, well, Terence just asked whether he is, he's a bit, the weight is 140, age 25, he's got pressure with 128, 88, it's not too bad. I think your medications is fine. You can continue with that. Most important to get pressure under control, all right? Yes. <coughs> okay, some questions about salt. Yes, that's right. Salt has association with high blood pressure. Uh, Okay, well, I like this question before I end, maybe. Terence has a question. Can sleeping late at night contribute towards high blood pressure? Usually not. Usually it's a transient. If you don't get enough rest, 
uh, the night before your pressure tends to be higher the next day. So make sure you try to get adequate rest, six to eight hours of sleep per day if you can, all right? Okay, I think there are too many. Do we have time to do one or two more? Okay, right, let's try to answer them. Okay, Andrew asks, once a person starts a medication for high blood pressure, he needs to take it constantly. Yes, because your blood pressure cannot be cured, can only be controlled, but you must do your lifestyle thing as well, all right? Bye-bye.